Alright guys, welcome back to another video. This week we're going to be making some DIY pleco food. Uh, more specifically we're going to be doing uh, the ancestress, so that's the vast majority of what I keep. For things like the hyper ancestress and other uh, types of plex, you want to be adding more protein to what I do. But I'll explain that throughout the video anyway. So, I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end. So, to start off with, I'm going to quickly go through everything that I'm going to be using uh, to make this food up. We've got a load of romaine lettuce. It's good stuff, don't need too much of it. Carrot, don't know if I use the whole lot. Courgette, probably won't use all of that either. Probably do half a head of broccoli. Some uh, spinach. Uh, what else are we using? Spirulina granules and some spirulina flake as well. I will put a list of everything that I'm using. There's so many more things that you can also use. Um, this is a just a, a small variety that you can use, but there will be a, there is a lot more. If you're making things for like high fat citrus, anything like that, you can go for obviously a more a higher protein content. So you can add things like pine shrimp, blood worm. Uh, protein granules, anything like that, just with a higher protein content for the fish that prefer a higher protein content. So this is obviously for like ancestors. Other than that, you're going to need a blender and a stove, just so you can, I'll show you why in a minute, but, uh, and also some gelatin as well, either the beef gelatin or the uh, vegetable gelatin. Right, so the reason you'll need the pot is so that you can boil a little for a little while. You don't want to do it for too long because you'll kill all the uh, all the nutritional value that's within the food itself. So yeah, you don't want to boil it for too long. But it also softens it up and kills any bad bacteria that might be on the food. So anyway, I'll start preparing it now and then we'll get it boiling and then blend it. I forgot to mention one thing. With things like courgette, I don't know if it's true, but a lot of places will put like a wax layer on them to keep making them look fresh and last longer. Um, so I will be peeling this just to get rid of it, just in case it has got a wax layer or something like that. Um, but yeah, just a good tip. to mention as well add some garlic as well that's all that's great for fish it's not too much the other reason it's good to get it nice and hot beforehand is so that you don't have to when you add the gelatin it, it it's ready to set straight away you haven't got to eat it up beforehand and mix it and everything like that Right, so I'm just leave that on there for a couple of minutes. If you're wondering why there's not much water, it's because that's the water that I'm actually going to be using in the blender. I don't want to use too much because I don't want to make too much up. So now I've been boiling for a couple of minutes. Slowly getting softer. Oh, time to blend it. I'm just going to add a fair bit. Nothing too crazy. Alright, you guys want us to listen to this, you can listen to the nice music that's playing in the background. Awesome, let's do this. Alright, let's add a little bit more. I forgot to mention the gelatine packs, the one that I'm using. Uh, it says it will set 570 mils of water, or liquid, not water. So obviously it works out to be a pint. Um, yeah, do yours accordingly. I don't know, this is from Tesco. I don't know which one you're going to use, but follow the instructions on the back. Right, so that's just like, it's over the amount that I need, but that's okay, so I can make a slightly bigger batch with two lots of gelatin. I thought 
Looks about the uh, spirulina granules and spirulina flakes as well, so I'll those now. But yeah, at this sort of point, you add your, if you're doing a higher protein one, you'll add the brine shift, the blood worm. Just make sure you don't worry too much about the blender. It's, it's pretty true. If you've done it right, it should look like a nice green looking or whatever colour veggie you use. Paste. That's what it should look like. Right, for this next stage, you want to work out exactly how much you've made up and how much gelatin you need to add. Because if you don't get the right mi mixture, it, it, it comes out as a, it'll either be really crumbly and won't hold together as like a gel type of food. If you use too much, it becomes incredibly clumpy. So you want to get the, just the right amount so it's a nice gel sort of consistency. If you've ever used anything like rapashi, any of those foods, you want to be, that's what you're aiming for, that's how you want it to come out. So, on to it. So I've used, I've made up 900 ml, sorry. Sounds great. Yeah, so it's just under 900 ml, so I realistically want to use uh, one pack and a third of a pack of the jelly bean stuff. Did about one and a half. That's okay. If you've got one, a whisk. Does it great? If you've got an electric whisk, even better. I just can't bother to get one out. So you want to mix it in real good. some sort of containers it's entirely up to you what you use you can either uh, freeze it so it sets quicker and you, it lasts longer obviously if it's frozen so if you're making a big batch i'd advise freezing a lot of it um or you can put it in the fridge it takes longer to set but it's ready to use straight away i find that when you freeze it it ends up floating Is much better consistency than when the, uh, the first time I tried doing it. Yeah, once it's set as well, I'll film it anyway, but that's when you can like start chopping it up. Yeah, it's looking a lot better than it was before. Right, anyway, I'll see you once it's set. All right, guys, so this is it the day after. It was left overnight. It's turned nice and solid, as you expect doesn't fall out so it's all good uh, the fridge was slightly colder than I thought it was going to be and it did end up freezing just over the top so I've been trying to defrost it back to its like normal gel form but I did grab a knife quickly and it is now pretty much ready so all you want to do is slice it and dice it make it into chunks as you would if you like used using rapashi or whatever and yeah so if we have a look Apart from the bottom didn't quite go as well. There you go, you've got nice chunks, ready to use. Just throw them, like throw them into the tank. And you can uh, cut them down to whatever size you want. Yeah, so they turned out really well, this lot. Um, this batch I did add slightly extra gelatin powder. And it, I have to say it did come out a lot better than my first attempt, which I forgot to film. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. I'm hoping when it defrosts it will go back to like normal, we'll see. It's got to say as well, obviously the best thing about this stuff is the stuff that you're not using, if you make up a big batch like I have here, or, well, to me it's not, because I'll use quite a lot of this quite quickly. But if you do make loads up, you can just freeze it and use it in whenever you like. Um, can't guarantee the consistency will be the same as when you first made it, because it is great when you first make it. But we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna go feed some of this to the fish and uh, you'll see the results for yourself. They absolutely love it.
today's video and I hope you found it useful as well so you can save some money, make your own food and just supply your fish with some great food. So this is so, so handy. I'm just so handy to have such a good supply of food and yeah, you don't, haven't got to go anywhere special, just your local shop. Yeah, if you did enjoy today's video, like and subscribe, it's normal, and see you next time.